Good buzz YouTube, happy Friday to everybody. Hopefully you all are having a good day today. Now, I know I said I wouldn't be getting up a new video until Monday or Tuesday, but it turns out that I actually don't have school today, which is Wednesday, but you guys won't be seeing this till Friday. So yeah, I decided just to quickly narrate a battle. Now, before I get into talking about the team preview, um, me and my good friend D-Black Stardust actually did some peel live in Spanish. So if you guys would like to see that, I'll leave that will be in the top left-hand corner of the video. Also, one more thing. Uh, recently, a lot of YouTubers have done uh, question and answer videos, and personally, I want to do one myself so if you guys could please leave me any questions that you have to ask me in the comment section down below please feel free to do so and you can also ask me more than one question you can ask me like five I don't care just leave it all in one comment uh, this will give you guys a chance to know me a little bit better and as I said you can ask me whatever you want and I will make sure to answer all the questions that I do get and hopefully be able to make a video sometime next week. Anyways, looking at the team preview, uh, I'm actually using a bit of an old team that I recently started using again because I really liked it. Uh, the general idea behind it is to get up hazards and then sweep with sub punch Golurk as my opponent's team seems to have a lot of heavy hitters in the forms of Golurk, Braviary, and Behem. So I'm definitely going to have to watch out for those two, but I'm not really worried about anything outside of the War Turtle just because from prior experience, I know War Turtle can deal with Golurk one-on-one. -on -one. So what I decided to do was actually uh, choose my Garbodor to be my lead. That way I could get up a layer of Tox Spikes and be able to poison the uh, War Turtle when he, just, when he does decide to bring it in and I can be able to stall it out and then later on in the battle be able to get up more hazards. So, I'm going to be leading off my Garbodor as he's going to be leading off with the Braviary. Uh, I completely took a risk of him possibly being the sub bulk up Braviary set, and I decided to go for a layer of Tox Spikes as opposed to going straight for the Rock Blast, which really could have been risky seeing as sub bulk up Braviary is designed to beat stall one on one. Uh, luckily for me, he turns out to be the standard choice set. I don't know if he's choice Bandit or choice Scarf just yet, so I definitely have to watch out for that later on in the battle. And I'm going to be able to get on my second layer of Tox Spikes, which means stalling out that War Turtle is going to be a whole lot easier. He did get a crit with the Psy Shock on my Garbodor, but obviously that doesn't matter, seeing as Behem has like a base 125 special attack. As I can get a free switch out into my Megatron, I actually went for the sub thinking he would be fearing the Shadow Punch, but he actually stayed in, which tells me he knew he would be able to take one. So that's definitely going to play a role later on in the battle. So not wanting to uh, take another Psy Strike... Uh, Psy Shock, sorry, I'm gonna bring in my Milk Tank, but he pulls his own double switch out into the Braviary, and even if he is Choice Banded, I am max defense, max HP on this Milk Tank, so I know I can take any hit this thing wants to throw at me. As he goes for the superpower, I don't even take half from that, so thinking he might want to stay in and go for another one, I'm gonna pull a switch out to my Golurk, but he pulls a double switch back out to Bahiam, predicting that. So here is where him knowing he can take a Shadow Punch comes into play because he actually predicted me to go for the Shadow Punch as opposed to going for the sub. Knowing that he would be able to leave, he could get the trick off and cripple my Golurk. But luckily, I did run a calc right before this move and I did go for the substitute. And I was able to uh, force him to switch out as now I can freely go for the uh, superpower as he brings in the Braviary. And I know if he does want to stay in that Focus Punch, wow I forgot for a second there that focus punch will be able to finish it off but instead he decides to u-turn now into the behem and even though this is not stabbed nor is it super effective that still does a very good chunk of damage to the behem and at this point uh that thing is practically dead so i know i can easily just go for the earthquake and finish him off but he actually decides to switch back out into the braviary now i know because he did go for the u-turn the fallen turn and get damage off of my sub the second u-turn more than likely is going to be able to break my sub so what i'm going to do is not go for the focus punch not go for earthquake and not go for Shadow Punch, but I am indeed going to go for another sub as he makes a good play, brings in Behem just basically as death fodder, uh, thinking I would go for the Focus Punch, that way my sub would be gone on whatever he decided to bring in, but uh, that wasn't the case and I did go for the second sub as I said. So he switches into the War Turtle, now because I do have Tox Spikes up, I know I will be able to beat this thing one on one because even if he is carrying Foresight, he would have to go for Foresight then go for the rapid spin but a combination of focus punch and earthquake is going to be an easy 2 KO on this war turtle which means my hazards are here to stay <laughs> so that's definitely good because now i can poison the remainder of his team as he's going to bring in his own goaler and the way he brought it in uh, told me that he was actually running a very good amount of speed evs which means he would be able to outspeed me and possibly finish me off so what I decided to do was bring in my War Turtle. Unfortunately, he gets a crit with the Shadow Punch, but because I am max defense and max HP, that does only about 40%, I want to say. So I know the Fallen Turn, I can take another one and be able to retaliate with the Scald, hoping that maybe he'll knock me down into Torrent Range and my Scald will be able to finish him off. Uh, but that isn't the case, and I do uh, just barely live around 30... 
5, 40% HP, but I'm still able to get off a heavy hit with the Scald. And knowing I should be able to leave my War Turtle for fodder later on in the battle just for that Braviary or that Electabuzz, I am going to switch out into my Rotom. And after the Toxic Damage, I know that the Air Slash is going to be an easy uh, one hit KO at that amount of HP. So I'm able to get rid of the Golurk as he's going to bring in the Braviary. And I was actually very positive that my Air Slash would be able to finish off the Braviary, but I didn't want to take the risk. And because Golurk is gone, I know I can just get a switch back out into my Rotom and then go for the Volt Switch knowing that nothing on this team resists it and I'm going to be able to get rid of the Braviary so one potential threat is out of the way as I'm going to bring back in my Golurk because his last two Pokemon at this point are the Electabuzz and the Vigoroth both which my Golurk can take on uh, one on one so I know from prior experience that I will be able to live this Hidden Power Ice but uh, he gets a crit which is very unfortunate uh, but hey, uh, crits are part of the game, as now I can get a switch out into my uh, Gardevoir. I was about to say Garbodor, because I always get Garbodor and Gardevoir like, mixed up, uh, just because they sound so familiar. So he does go for the Volt Switch, knowing that his last is Vigoroth, even if he did go for it, a Psychic should be an easy 2 KO, especially due to the fact that I do have Rocks up and I do have uh, Toxic Spikes up. As he's going to go for the Body Slam, I was actually surprised by how much damage that did because I thought that was regular damage, but it turns out that he got a crit, which means Gardevoir is just amazing! Oh, I love Gardevoir, this thing is way too good. And at this point, his last is the Electabuzz, which I just went for Protect so I could get uh, the Toxic Damage racking up on him because what I wanted to do was uh, bring in my Roll Time and safely finish him off with the Thunderbolt, but what I decided to do was be a bit of an asshole, bring in my Milk Tank, thinking, hey, I can leave a hit and finish it off with Milk Tank, right? No. I completely forgot that Electabuzz can even learn Focus Blast and he's able to finish me off but he dies off to the Toxic Damage for the narrow 1-0 victory in my favor. So yeah guys with that said, if you did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like, uh, leave a comment asking me some questions so I can do this question and answer that I really want to do and if you would like to see more content from me feel free to subscribe and with that guys enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your week and I do believe I am out of here. Later!